Hi, welcome to math for fourth grade. This is lesson 138. And so this should be your Monday lesson. And we're gonna go ahead and review a couple things and then I'll let you pause it to take a speed drill and then we will get into our lesson. All right, so first of all, up here we've got our metric system that we're gonna review, okay? So, the meter is the basic unit of length, okay? So this is, these are in the meters. Um, and so our, remember our uh, prefixes, what comes at the beginning of the word is our, our metric prefix can go with meters, liters, or grams. And sometimes we just look at them as, um, deci, centi, milli, deca, hecto, kilo. Okay, if you remember, and I have written down here the, the, um, the letters in order, we say King Henry dot drinks Diet Coke Mondays. Okay, and there's a couple other ways of saying that, but I'm going to stick with the one that doesn't sound so, so bad. Um, not bad, but not about people dying. So, um, we've got decimeters. Deci is our small one that takes 10 decimeters to equal a meter. A decimeter is um, the size of your, <laughs> the size from your, from one side of your hand to the to your thumb, okay? That should be, that's about a decimeter. One centimeter is about the size of your pinky. The tip of your pencil is about one millimeter, okay? A baseball bat is about a meter, and a kilometer is slightly longer than half a mile, okay? So if when you're, driving along and you you see the mile markers and you go and sometimes they have a mark for half a mile and so if you see that you can say oh well we just went about a kilometer okay um and you might impress somebody if you say that but with those we want to make sure that we keep them in their order we've got our bigger ones kilo means a thousand so it's a thousand a thousand meters to equal a kilometer. Hecto means a hundred. Deca means ten. Of course, deci means ten, but these are the small ones, okay? So these ones take meters to make up these big ones, and it takes these small ones, many of these, to make up the meter. So deci is our small ten, so ten of the decimeters to make up a meter. Centi is 100, but it takes 10 centimeters to make up a meter. And milli is 1,000. It takes 1,000 millimeters to make up a meter, okay? So that's, that's how to do those. Um, over here, we're going to review our decimals and turning, um, turning a fraction into decimal and then turning a decimal back into a fraction, okay? So if we have one tenth, what does that look like as a decimal? Okay, this was, remember, we have one, zero, we put our, our decimal point, we have a zero, which means that we can put this one in that spot, okay, so one tenth. This goes in the tenth spot, which is the first one after the decimal, and we just put our one there, okay, so one tenth. What about three hundredths? Three hundredths. Okay, we're gonna put our decimal, and we've got two zeros, so we're gonna have to put a zero first, and then put a three, okay? Point zero three is three hundredths. Okay, this one, we've got a whole number first. So before we put a decimal, we put our whole number, and then we put our decimal. And then our fraction is seven tenths. And seven tenths, that notice that we have one zero and one number, we just put our seven there, right? Okay? All right, now we have 0. 0.7. What is that in a, in a fraction? 
Okay. We put the seven on the top. And what place is this in? It's in the tens, tenths place. So we're going to put it down on the bottom. Okay. Here, we've got a whole number. So we put our whole number first, right? And five, and it's in the tenth spot as well. So we would put five tenths. And then here, we've got three as our whole number. And we've got 32. We're gonna put that on the top. And what is our number on the bottom? We need to go with the last place. So what, what place is the two in? It's in the hundredths place. So we're gonna put a hundred on the bottom, okay? I hope that makes sense to you. And if it, it doesn't, you can um, read back over that or, or re-listen to that. And um, if it's, you're still struggling, you can always have your parents contact me. I'm gonna let you go ahead and pause the video right now so that you can take your speed drill. And then we will jump it right into our lesson when we come back. All right, we're gonna go ahead and look at our lesson. A wise customer checks the change received before leaving the store, okay? I um, recently was, um, in the last couple of weeks, I was at Smith's and I had paid in cash and the change comes out into a, into a little little container and so I went to grab they gave me the bills and I went to grab the change and I looked at the change before I walked out of the store and it only had it was supposed to be seven cents and I only had two pennies it didn't kick out the nickel and so I said to the the lady at the behind the register I said it only need two pennies and it's supposed to be seven cents and so she gave me the nickel. She opened her drawer and gave me a nickel. Um, but that was me being a good customer, a wise customer, and checking my change. Because if you don't check your change to see if, if it is correct, if they gave you too much or if they gave you too little, then um, their drawer is going to be off and you're going to be missing. You might be missing money. Um, and you don't want to have it where they've accidentally given you too much money and then they get in trouble because they don't have enough money in their drawer. Um, and so you, you want to be kind and courteous to others in that way. If too little change is received, politely show the error to the clerk and ask for the remaining money. If too much is received, return the extra money to the clerk who made the mistake. And so that is, that's being a wise customer, wise as as a human being, but wise in the things that God has given us too. Um, you know, if we are honest with people, then they are wanting to be honest with us. Um, and so that's that's a good way to look at it. Okay, so I'm gonna gonna um, do a, a little demonstration, and hopefully you can see it. So if I if you are gonna buy something for two dollars and fifty cents, okay, you hand me this five dollar bill, okay. I take the five dollars, I put it in my drawer, and then I go ahead and I get a count of money. And of course, I've got these big old quarters. I, I don't know where we, we got these quarters because they're too big for our, our system, but that's okay. That helps you guys see them. That, that's the idea. Um, so I give you two quarters because that's 50 cents, and it was 250. So we have 50 cents, and then I give you a dollar. Did I give you enough change? Go ahead and count 250 and add the 150 and see what you get to. Do you get to $5 or did I not give you enough or did I give you too much? Okay, I did not give you enough because if you count from 250, two quarters makes $3, $1 makes $4, okay? So I get, I shorted you $1. I should have given you $2.50 back, right? Because $5 minus $2.50 is $2.50. It's one of those cool things uh, that happens because 50 minus 25 is 25. And so 
if you have five dollars minus 250 you get 250 okay so that's that's one way to check that you want to make sure that you count your your change and that you are um but also that you're polite about it so that you're not being um a rude customer you don't want to be saying you didn't give me enough change and yelling at them because maybe they've been having a rough day maybe they they just have been working since four in the morning and it's just been a very long day and they just forgot you've got to give people grace okay and that that's that's a way to to really just make sure that they are um that that you care about them by being polite okay and so um in on your page i'm just going to go over some of the things that i want you to do the whole first section is just checking the change so that in there you're going to go through and you're going to see okay they they cost this much the items cost column is that first one so it costs 257 for the first one um they gave the clerk three dollars they received 43 cents and so then the coins and bills received and you're going to add those up and make sure that that matches and if it does match then you put a check mark if it's correct if it doesn't mark match you don't put anything in the blank you just we just know that that those were not given correctly okay second section is doing what we did right here on the board it's exactly this um just writing out either please of uh, writing out either um actually it is it's taking it from the fraction i'm sorry fraction to decimal um and that's what you're doing and then on the next page on the back it takes you from decimal back to fraction and so um i want you to do all of section two um and go ahead and do let's see so this th section three starts the review um we're going to go ahead and do all of section three so all of this first page i want you to do and then turning over to the back do all of four because that's our metric that we went over and then all of five is that that's again those um, decimals into fractions um, and do all of six because it's all one thing um, and then for seven pick one of them you may pick any one of them and pick one of them since i have you doing most of everything else on the on the page you can pick one of them to do and um, just be careful when you're counting your change to make sure that it's exactly right because um, you know one day you might be uh, a clerk you might be someone that that stands at a cash register i've done it at multiple places that i've worked and i actually love it i love interacting with people and i love um, dealing i love working with the money um, it's just it's fun and it's fun to count back the change um, so you might do this and um, you know it, they do have computers that do the change for you but it also can make a mistake and so you want to be able to count it back yourself so that you know that it's accurate um, my mom works at a at a, a flower shop and I, they do like um, coffees and and drinks like that and she says that one of their machines doesn't do um if you do cash they have a machine that doesn't that doesn't do the change for you and she can do the change just like that and others are asking her why can you how can you do that and she said i learned how to count back I know how to do it and she learned it when she was in, when she was young and so it stuck with her all this time and she even can do it faster than the machine like the one that does tell her the change she can do it faster than that um, in her mind and so um, it's definitely a good skill to have to be able to count back change um, sometimes power goes out or something and your or the internet goes down and you may be 
have to rely on doing things by hand. And if if your boss can trust you with knowing what to what to return to their customers and not losing money and not giving too much and not not giving too little, then that's a valuable skill to have. So um, let's learn this well so that you can um, maybe use it someday um, and hopefully. So um, that is the end of the lesson today and we will see you next time.